Hey guys, Chase from Raider Robotics here. Today we're going to be making our first autonomous path in Roadrunner. If you haven't already done so, please follow my videos on how you can install, set up, and tune Roadrunner for this. We will be going through how to understand the pose, all of the movements that you can do with the robot, as well as creating actions so that you can actually do something in the field. There's of course going to be timestamps in the description, but without further ado, let's get into this. All right, here we are in our Android Studio repository. I've went ahead and moved into our sample op mode under tutorial under the team code package. From here, all I'm going to do is set this up as an autonomous program, where I decorate it as an autonomous class, extend it from linear op mode, and create my run loop. After doing these basic steps, we're going to go ahead and get into the red runner. What we're going to need to do first is set up a pose 2D for the robot. This is essentially where the robot starts on the field. As you can see, it needs a vector 2D for its position, and then a double that is its heading. Looking at the coordinates on Meet Me, the X and Y runs on a positive and negative scale, where 0, 0 is the middle, Y equals negative 72 is the middle of the red alliance, and Y equals positive 72 is the middle of the blue alliance. When I choose my starting position, I like to put the middle of the robot in the pose point. Therefore, if I were to put my 18-inch robot on the edge of the blue alliance in the dead middle, his X would be 0 and his Y would be 63. In terms of heading, we can look at this compass, where facing forward towards the middle would be 270 degrees. After looking, we will go ahead and put in the X and Y, as well as the heading of the robot in radians. We will then create our mechanism driver tank drive object where we pass in the hardware map and the beginning pose that we just made. And we will now wait for start. Now we are going to create our autonomous path. As you can see, I've set up an action, which is our path using the drive.action builder, where we will then use a bunch of trailing functions to set up some of the parameters and steps throughout this action builder. To get an idea of what each function does, let's go to the Learn Road Runner page where we will look at the Trajectory Builder function list. While it does say this is used for the Trajectory Builder, this is also used for the Action Builder, which is what we will be using. First is the Forward, where all it does is obviously move forward in the direction the robot is facing. Next is Back, where it drives backwards from where the robot is facing. Strafe Left moves the robot leftwards without rotating the bot and it does the same for strafe right except rightwards. Strafe 2 actually makes a direct line from point A to point B, being the end position that you place, without moving the robot's heading. You may also use line 2, which essentially does the same exact thing as strafe 2. Line to linear heading does the same thing as line 2, except you can put in a specific heading within that pose that you pass through, and it will also rotate to match that while still staying in that straight line. This is where you can start to see that Roadrunner is really, really powerful in the sense that we can also rotate while moving in a straight line, be it diagonal or anything of the sort. You can also use a spline heading instead of a linear heading, which smoothly interpolates between the start and end headings. Here we are with spline 2. This is where things get a little bit more complicated. As you can see, we have an end position as vector 2D, and we have an end tangent as a double. This end tangent confused me for a while because changing it actually changes how the spline looks. As you can see, it's an S-curve right now, but if you were to increase it, it would actually change the curve of the S or how straight it is. When you provide an end tangent, this sets the end direction of the meet me path. As you can see here, the bot ends looking straight forward to the right, which in the compass is zero degrees. This is what's passed in the function as this math dot two radians zero. Therefore, if you wanted the robot to go in a curve where it drives upwards to stop at this same spot instead of driving to the right to stop at the spot, you could put the end tangent at math.2 radians 90 degrees, and it would do so. You just also have to consider the fact that this spline start would also go upwards and then curve and go back up. Here's an example of a spline with constant heading where it moves in the same tangent direction, but the rotation of the robot doesn't change. You may also use a linear heading where instead of having it face the end direction of the spline, it will face somewhere else. 
All that you have to do here is put in a pose 2D, which includes its heading. As well here, we have a spline to spline heading, where of course the rotation works in an interpolated spline. The important thing to understand here is that Roadrunner really likes to prioritize smooth interpolated paths using the splines. In calculating these paths, Roadrunner uses some sort of derivative-like function where it doesn't like any sharp turns. Using functions like line2, where you have a line here and then a line here, creates a sharp point here. This makes continuity exceptions in the path which doesn't make it smooth and makes you have to create multiple paths and make it stop, rotate, turn, or do all sorts of really slow things. To make it move from point to point very quickly, using splines is the way to go. In order to add any actions into your path, all you have to do is use any of the functions in between this action path and this dot build line. This object and method function is something called a builder. This is something you see very often, where you can chain these methods on the action builder back to back to back. For demonstration purposes, all that I'm going to do is spline the robot around the submersible. As we can see here, what I've done is make a spline to with a spline heading, where it moves to x equals 40, y equals zero, and faces in 180 degrees, which should hopefully be facing the submersible on the right side of the field. I also put a spline tangent as 270 degrees, such that it drives downward so that it tries not to hit the submersible. I'm then gonna spline downwards to y equals negative 48, before making a direct line to x equals zero and facing towards the submersible. Now that we've created our path, we will go ahead and use the actions.run blocking, where we pass in a sequential action of the path. All that the sequential action is going to do is run each step in the action one by one. And now this is generally the bulk of the Roadrunner Autonomous. What we're going to do now is run this in Meep Meep so we can see how it does in a virtual space before running it on hardware that could get damaged. The best way that I like to do this is copy my code, go ahead and move over to my Meep Meep testing and find the mybot.run action, and then go ahead and place your code in this section between the run action and build. Go ahead and make sure your pose 2D is correct and follows what we had in the sample op mode, and then go ahead and run your code. Here is our path running in Meep Meep. As you can see, it smoothly splines through that first step, then instantly goes into the next spline to move all the way to the bottom before stopping and moving into this next line. Looking at it in real time, this first and second spline lines up seamlessly and almost looks like one spline in its own, but running that line has to make it stop and then move into that straightforward. Running this in Meep Meep has helped us look that the robot absolutely would collide with the submersible here, at least with the support. So we should probably fix where it's moving here in order to remove this collision. One way to fix this would be changing the tangent of the spline function so that it might move in a little bit of a better direction that won't hit it. But personally, I'm just going to add another spline in between this so that it moves a little bit more around the submersible. Once we've added that final extra spline, we can go ahead and test this in our Meep Meep. So go ahead and copy this code, paste it back into your Meep Meep, and then click Run. As you can see, our robot smoothly moves around these supports while getting to the same exact spot in this smooth manner. Now, the functions that we've covered are good for moving the robot around the field and utilizing our DC motors on the wheels. But if we wanted to use any other accessories on the robot, such as moving a lift, closing a claw, or doing anything such as that, these lines, splines, and all of those stray functions will not help us. Instead, we have to use another function. This function is called the stop and add function. This requires something called an instant function. It's simply a class that allows us to push through functions as parameters. If we scroll up just above our run op mode section, we can create our instant function classes. Creating an instant function is as simple as this. You declare it as a class that implements the instant function, 
and you have to make this override method called run. The instant function is a interface, so that's why we use the implements keyword there instead of the extends. I created this instant function as an open claw, so let's go ahead and create the implementation of this just to see how powerful these instant functions are. I went ahead and created a servo variable for my claw. In my run op mode, I've created my claw and used the hardware map.get to get this from my configuration. In this function, all that I've done is set the claw's position to zero, which in this case would theoretically be the open position. Now I've made the open claw class. It's very straightforward because all I'm doing is one set position, but you could imagine the creativity that you could have with multiple parts moving. Back down in our action, I'm going to create a new instance of the open clock class. Once you've put in your instant function, that is about it. This instant function will run directly after the command that goes before it, and it will just go straight through like it does for all of these other options. If you wanted to halt your path until something happens in this instant function, all you have to do is put a while loop and it will stay in the instant function. Another thing to consider is that these instant functions are classes and they have constructors, meaning we can pass values to this run function in the open claw. To demonstrate this, I'm going to set up a target position value that this claw will set its position to. As you can see, we have created our instance variable here, created our constructor. Within our constructor, we have this argument that is target position. We now go ahead and set the instance variable value to the argument that was passed. And in our run function, all we're going to do is replace this zero with our instance variable target position. Now, if we go back down to our stop and add where we had this new open claw, you should see that it's expecting an argument, this being that target position. So if we put a zero, the target position that the claw would open to would be zero. If we put it to 0 0.5, it would then open to 0 0.5, so on and so forth. I've used this parameter function in terms of sending my lift to specific points in this autonomous path. I've also used the while loop waiting that I talked about previously to wait for my lift so that I wouldn't close the claw if the lift was not up where it needs to be. So these are just some ideas that you can have in your brain to get creative and actually utilize the most of this autonomous path action builder. Just a note that in Meet Meep, the stop and add function doesn't have any functionality, so it really glosses over and skips these points in the autonomous path when you're visualizing it. And that's about it for our Roadrunner Autonomous. There's not too much to cover here because a lot of it is just testing yourself and moving a lot of different values around, and of course those instant functions and creating your own ideas with those. Leveraging Roadrunner in your Autonomous not only makes things so much more smoother, but it makes it a lot faster to debug and actually create, since you're using stuff with inches and you have visual representations of the field that you can go off of. If you're having any problems with your robot not doing what it shows in the Meet Meep code and it jittering or doing anything weird like that, make sure that you go back and tune your robot again, because that can be one of the main problems with the disconnect between Meet Meep and real life. But anyway, guys, that's about it. Thanks for watching and good luck.